won the Texas straw poll uh, along with California earlier. Yes, Ron Paul has ardent supporters that show up at these events more than others. Uh, that, so it shows the core of the most dedicated wing of the Republican Party uh, and others uh, that might have been attracted in. Since the Republican Party is kind of an amorphous, arbitrary circle of people, um, since uh, we have this sort of globally interconnected online communities now, and this the way our system is set up, uh, it just gets weaker and weaker as there are more parties. We don't have any kind of proportional representation. Uh, so at any rate, uh, Ron Paul won both polls, the, the paper ballot and the online. He had about, were about 800 paper ballots cast, about 4,000 online text uh, ballots, and he won 27%, followed by Gingrich, 24%, I'm rounding, Rick Perry, 19%, Mitt Romney, 7, uh, Rick Santorum, 21, and on the online, he really took it. Of course, there were a lot of minor candidates also who got ballots, interestingly enough. Oh, no, that's for the Senate. Uh, and then for the online ballot, uh, let's see if I can find that for you. I do have it here. The online ballot, 54% for Ron Paul. 15% for Rick Santorum. So in the media, we've seen three phases. The first phase, they literally deleted him from the results. And John Stewart has an excellent satire about this, where they literally all use the same exact uh, intro line. There is now a top tier of candidates, first, second, and fourth. They skip third at the time. Uh, and uh, then, um, uh, then when he won the Iowa caucuses, people said that discredits the Iowa caucus. I mean, his, his ranking in the Iowa caucus, he did poorly enough that it wasn't made an issue, but he did well enough, uh, clearing 20% of the vote, 23% of the vote, that people uh, did uh, make a note of that fact. And then he went to, uh, uh, got a similar amount of the vote in uh, New Hampshire, and he's looking to do the same in South Carolina. Uh, so at any rate, uh, the news now is taking his candidacy more seriously, and people are beginning to talk about the fact that it's not really a candidacy as much as it is a cause. Uh, and the, the nice thing about this cause is even if you believe the government should provide all of our needful services, it's a cause that asks people to look at themselves as a point of self-reliance, and because he's an anti-war candidate, uh, and any um, empire candidate, people that don't like war and don't like empire, which are many of them on the left, are looking at him because he has a vastly superior policy than Obama on our foreign overseas policy. We don't need to have our troops all forward deployed in peacetime. This whole war terror is just a crock. It's a few bands of extremists, and they'll simmer down once we get out of their hair. They have no particular need to cross the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean to attack us if we're not engaged. Obviously, uh, it's just absurd to think otherwise. No one is qualified to be in office in a foreign policy position if that's not understood. That if you stop killing people in the Middle East and leave it, that it's less likely they'll come and kill us. They're going to be involved with their enemies. We are their enemy. If we are, cease to engage them, their enemies will be the border states and other countries who want to project their militaries in the region. And you'll notice that we're the only one really projected in the region other than post-U.S. invasion. So once we pop the cherry, uh, the NATO guys flow in. But uh, every time, it's us. Uh, and if you look at countries uh, like uh, Saudi Arabia, although I think there's presently, I don't know if there's U.S. troops there or not, but a country like that, only U.S. troops are stationed in, as far as I know. Of course, France has its former colonial empire in Africa, which it still maintains presence in and so forth. So at any rate, um, so people are looking at this issue of self-reliance, and actually I think for the African-American community, it's none of my business, I suppose, to comment, but I think there's a very strong attraction to self-reliance in the African community, the people who have gotten, uh, starting to get out or trying to get out of the whole uh, ghetto problem uh, and all the, the, uh, the things that can hold people back as a middle class of blacks establish themselves. Most of them have to work really hard for it. Uh, and uh, many people who want to get socially upward in the black community don't really feel like the system is going to take care of them as uh, certain black leaders have indicated. 
Um, and Obama has been a big letdown because he seems to be corporatist and uh, defend uh, the uh, big power structures that he has at least temporarily allied with, which includes the military industrial complex. So uh, progressives and Democrats must vote for Ron Paul. They must defect the Republican Party and vote for Ron Paul for this election because we, uh, he's an anti-war president. He's, they're not going to change Congress overnight. He's not going to be able to close all the, uh, he can close and liquidate agencies, it's true, but uh, he's not going to be able to uh, dismantle the budget. And if he tries to liquidate some of these sacred cows, they're going to say, we're not going to give you X, Y, and Z. So he's going to have a lot tougher time doing the slashing. And he's made a statement that he's not going to initially take anyone off their benefits because he realizes people will become dependent on government. And so he wants to maintain those programs and figure out a way forward for problem. You see, by dismantling the poverty uh, government welfare system, uh, it's perhaps not a, a pleasant idea and it may not work at all, but if it did work, uh, it would force people to become self-reliant, uh, which would be a hugely better society, but it wouldn't be a, a hugely better society if um, the people who uh, have all the money continue to mistreat the rest of the people in the fashion that they have, abusing the system, looting it, and making Washington co-opted. And so Ron Paul's argument has been, yes, okay, you guys think you can get the federal government to do all these things for you, but what you don't understand is that the regulators are regulated by the power structures that control elections and control Congress through lobbyists. So right now we have a highly corrupt system uh, the individual has very little impact on the system. Money has a huge impact on the system. We did have a wave of public support of Obama. We hope to see that for Ron Paul because Obama has completely betrayed everything he promised. The other important area is civil liberties. And we have basically had martial law declared on us with the Patriot Act. And then we've had it declared on us doubly with this uh, National Defense Authorization Act, which allows indefinite detention for Americans on suspicions of association with Al-Qaeda and related groups. Uh, against uh, even uh, American allies and apparently we can be sent to any foreign country anywhere in the world to any foreign prison because there's one law that deals with what to do with these quote-unquote terrorists and that says we can send them anywhere uh, and particularly focus on the country of origin but it seems to me that you could take an American and then ship him to um, uh, let's say uh, what's still Saudi Arabia for torture I don't know uh, uh, you know, one of the repressive regimes that were doing these rendition programs, Poland. Uh, so at any rate, <clears throat> progressives have to vote for him because he controls the executive. The executive controls, is a commander of chief. He can draw it all down. Um, okay, so I've addressed that aspect of it. Uh, then the big question that we must solve is how do we avoid accelerated concentration of wealth? And what about justice? Uh, so Ron Paul wants to devolve this to the states, and I basically agree. I don't think that, I think we've moved over the times where uh, devolution of the states creates extreme <coughs> lawmaking. It'll be true in a few states. But in general, people know more about what's going on in their state than they do in the country and with foreign affairs. Uh, so uh, by constraining the federal government to that role, it drains a lot of the money out of the power cycle because the federal government doesn't do as much and it's going to reconcentrate those funds at the state level. Uh, but the, the voters are going to be harder to fool, in my opinion, and they can really concentrate their minds when they do vote for federal government on foreign policy. And perhaps they'll be less manipulated. Thank you very much. Good night and good luck. And let's get Ron Paul elected. Oops.